One of the biggest hurdles those of us in the longevity community have to overcome is convincing people that living longer is not a curse. Popular media will paint it as such, and in that context you are the only immortal. Watching all of your loved ones grow old and die would be horrible. That's why we want to make sure it happens to no one. Most people don't like the idea of living to 200 because they have a concept that from 100 to 200, they're living as a permanently frail, sickly old form of themselves. But that's not what we are trying to accomplish because I doubt many would want that. To understand this, we need not to look at lifespan, but rather health span. Lifespan refers to how long you live. Health span refers to the part of that life where a person is in generally good health. So much of modern medicine is about increasing one's lifespan, but not necessarily their health span. The medical field even developed the concept of dailies and qualies, which stand for disability adjusted life years and quality adjusted life years respectively. A daily is a measure of lost healthy years, whilst a quali is a measure of how many years of life are lived in good health. In a nutshell, it looks at how long a person is intended to live after treatment and what their quality of life will be, calculating from there. For example, with qualies, death is considered a zero score and perfect health is considered one. If you had some kind of disease, it might be considered that for each year of life, because of your chronic condition, you get a score of 0.71 instead of one. So after living for 10 years with this condition, it would state that your quali over those 10 years was actually only 7.1 years. But the point I'm trying to make here is that those in the longevity community don't want to increase your lifespan, but rather your health span. The fact that your lifespan will increase as a byproduct of this is a wonderful side effect. Now I did a lot of research into how long someone might live if we were to eliminate natural causes of death from the equation. If you never aged, you would be far less likely to get sick from practically everything except congenital conditions. The only way you could die was from accidents or homicides. To quote one of my favorite movies, on a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone drops to zero. I don't think we'll ever be truly immortal, but biological immortality would make your life considerably longer. How long? Well, as I said, it seems to vary wildly from the different statistical models used, but I've seen everything quoted from 500 years to 9,000. I see people say how cursed immortality would be because you would survive the heat death of the universe and float through space for all eternity. First of all, unless we come up with some insane scientific discoveries in the future, that's literally impossible. Also, the earliest point the universe will end, according to projections, is 22 billion years in the future. There's a fucking huge gap between 80 years and 22 billion. I think people might be happy with a number somewhere between those two. Bringing it back to the projections about eliminating natural causes of death, let's take the least optimistic of these. There is a gulf of time between 80 and 500 years. Even better, if that time is spent as a biologically 25 year old that did not have to deal with chronic pain or other age related diseases, how much more enjoyable would it be? It's beautiful to see an old couple in retirement still looking into each other's eyes with the same love and longing they had when they were childhood sweethearts. But how much more beautiful would it be to see that same couple 200 years from now, but still youthful and vibrant and able to explore all the adventures they had in their youth. That kind of love, the kind that would keep someone together for two centuries. It's something we can't even conceive of right now. I would never want to force immortality onto people and I don't think anyone does. But people should be allowed to choose when to go, not have it forced upon them. In all honesty, I feel sad for people who say they would be bored with living that long, that they would run out of things to do and grow jaded with life. There is so much I want to do, so much I want to learn, but I look at how short my life is and there's not enough time to do it. I've spent my career thus far learning biology and medicine. 
I want to learn everything, or at least everything that is physically possible to learn. If I were to specialise in every subsection of medicine, for example, it would take me at least a century, and by the time I'd learnt it all, medicine and technology would advance so far I'd have to start it all over. And that's just one profession. I want to learn physics, maths, art, poetry, history, languages, literature. There's thousands of languages, and I only know one so far. There's 195 countries on this planet, and I've been to two of them. I've been to just over 1% of the countries on this earth, and that's not even considering the fact that in the future, we might well be able to travel to other planets. I want to go rock climbing, scuba diving, skydiving, surfing, snowboarding, I want to see the world. Jeez, I can't even play 10% of the video games that come out, because there's just not enough time in my life. All these things that I've not been able to do through a combination of circumstance and finance, why do people not want to do them? All the experiences I want to enrich my life with, and there just isn't enough time to do it. I grew up playing video games, I didn't really have a life, and it opened up all the possibilities. You know, maybe I could be a doctor one day, maybe I could be a scientist one day, maybe I could be a lawyer defending someone who was wrongly convicted. But we're told we can only choose one path in life. I don't want that to be the case. I want to do everything. To those people who say living would get boring, I have to assume that they're already so beaten down with life, jaded with it that they can't see the wood for the trees, can't see all the positivity that does exist, and all the possibilities that are out there. The joy of being able to just lie on the grass with the sun in your face surrounded by friends, how could that get boring? How can you get bored of life when there is a near limitless number of things to do, billions of people to interact with, and those numbers are only going to get bigger as the years go on? The other argument, which again baffles me, is that it would be pointless to acquire all this knowledge because the human mind is only, and I really have to put that in quotation marks, only able to store 2.5 petabytes of data. That's according to our best theoretical estimates at least. That is 2.5 million gigabytes. Our lives are so short we don't even come close to that theoretical limit. Add to that the fact that the brain is a dynamic organ with the ability to form new connections and reorganize itself throughout life, it's nonsensical to compare us to a computer. The same people who state you would get bored of life also tend to state that it would be pointless anyway because you would forget what you've learnt. Have these people never experienced the joy of rediscovering something, the nostalgia of something from their childhood, and that's even assuming one can't derive pleasure from the same experiences? I've lost count of how many times I've played through Dark Souls. That, 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 that's a lie. It's, it's 23. Every time I play it now, I invite a new friend to go through it and I get to vicariously enjoy the experience of them going through it for the first time. There's so much to do and so much to learn from each other. There's no end to the joy that we can derive. You see, people who have joy in life have a reason to keep going. They never want to stop. Martin Scorsese is 80 years old at the time of writing this. I saw an interview with him recently saying how sad he was he still has so many stories to tell, but doesn't feel like he has enough time left to tell them. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger talked about recently how he was struggling with the aging process. This was a man who was known as a modern day Hercules, and now when he looks in the mirror he sees his form deteriorating. So why don't we do something about that? Why aren't we able to preserve the life that we already have? rather than saying, oh, you've been here for 80 years, got to make way for the next generation. Let's preserve what we have, not keep renewing it. Nir Bazali studied hundreds of centenarians and looked at what were known as super centenarians. These people lived over 100 years and didn't have any chronic health conditions until the last few months of their life. This is contrary to most humans, whose last decades of life are often plagued with chronic health conditions. Some of them stayed fit and healthy, watching what they ate and drank. Others smoked and drank and it seemed to have no detrimental health effects. 
The only constant amongst all of them was that they were happy. They had a purpose. They didn't feel stressed. And so they had a reason to keep going. One New York banker at 102 said that if you told him he couldn't work anymore, he would pay you to work. He didn't do it for financial obligation. He did it because he loved it. I know for me, I never want to retire. Maybe that's not working for some corporate overlord. Maybe one day I can be my own boss and do things my way. But the bottom line is, I never want to stop, whatever that might look like. Nir Bazali's research is about trying to give more people the opportunity to be super centenarians, so they can live into later life without all these chronic conditions. I want to take it a step further. I want people to be 120 and still look 20. I see so many athletes become depressed and overweight after they have to retire because they lose their identity. Imagine if through this research and regenerative medicine, that never had to happen. I mean, we're already heading that way with all the supplements and medicine we have. Yul Romero is 46 and still ragdolling motherfuckers. Wanna step in the cage with this guy? Cause I certainly don't. Past their prime? Imagine if that phrase became obsolete because your prime is forever. How crazy would it be to see an accountant hit, say, 60 and go, fuck it, I want to be an MMA fighter and have no reason not to. 10 years later at 70 becomes world champion. Who doesn't want to see a world that crazy? Where opportunities don't shrink as you age, you only acquire more knowledge and how better to utilize it. But you might be thinking, well, Tolden, that's some real sci-fi nonsense you're talking about. I mean, you've talked for almost three hours about all the science and the throughput is we are still investigating it. There's no hope of biological immortality being reached in my lifetime. Well, what if I told you it didn't need to? Longevity escape velocity is a hypothetical concept coined by Aubrey de Grey. It states that because of the exponential growth we are experiencing, that new technologies which can extend your life need only do just that. Take this as an example. You live for two years, and in that time, a new piece of technology emerges which lets you reverse your age by two years. In the following two years, a new piece of technology emerges which means you can reverse your age by three years. The rate at which incremental life technologies emerge exceeds how fast you are aging. You don't need biological immortality to be here before you hit your life expectancy. You just need to keep ahead of the curve. You just need to live long enough to live forever. Aubrey de Grey states that there is about a 50% chance we could reach longevity escape velocity by 2035. I'm not so optimistic of that number, but who knows? AI has recently taken the world by storm and is being utilized in drug discovery and development. With their help, who knows what can be accomplished in the following years. I know a lot of the scientists are very hesitant to say these words. They have to mask it in more eloquent dialect about living healthier and longer. But I'm just a YouTuber with 32 subscribers as I make this. I don't have to mince my words, so I'm not going to. I want things to be way better than that. I don't want to give people false hope. The whole point of making this video is to try and raise awareness. If more can be done on the research side of things, the faster we can get there, and the more lives we can save. That's why I made this video, as a one-man passion project in my spare time, to try and raise some awareness. Now, I wouldn't be able to complete this chapter without talking about Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson is a very wealthy software entrepreneur who has more than 30 doctors and health experts monitoring his every bodily function. He has been described as the most studied human on earth. He is somewhat of a divisive figure. To be fair, there are few in this industry who are not, given the radical approaches we advocate. I don't agree with a lot of the protocols he is following, but I see a lot of vitriol directed towards them that I think is just unwarranted. Some categorize his approach as the epitome of a wealthy man having a midlife crisis and trying to reverse their age. What I see is a man passionate about finding ways to age healthily. I don't think the solution is going to come down to diet and exercise, we need a more molecular approach. But the data he is generating, 
and the discussions he is creating is invaluable to longevity research and tracking the biomarkers of aging. And to those who think that this concept is somehow going against nature, I want to end with this quote, which I'm like 90% certain is from Bioshock Infinite. I don't know, I haven't played it, and I don't care, because it's beautiful. Nature has no will, and she is not your mother. There is only you, and the spark of the sublime that is your mind.